Welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about Garmin's body battery versus a daily HRV reading. So what I've done is for 30 days, I compared how, what does body battery tell me? What does my HRV tell me? And how am I feeling that day? To see if there would be an actual difference between these. To see, can I use body battery or can I use HRV? Which of these two things is really better? Okay, so if you're not familiar, Garmin's body battery is a feature that uses Garmin's stress score, comparing like how, what your HRV is doing throughout the day, adding in things like how well you slept, how hard you've worked out, how stressed you are, to give you a readiness score every morning to tell you like you're 100% recharged, you're 80% recharged, you're only like 35% recharged. Your daily HRV, so HRV stands for heart rate variability, it's the time between each heartbeat. And there's a significant amount of research out there that tells you if I measure my HRV each morning, it should tell me how recovered or how I'm doing and can give you a readiness score as well. And there are a number of ways to measure your HRV and a number of software programs out there to analyze it. I'm actually gonna use, I used, decided to use two different measurements of HRV just to be able to compare. I took my HRV via an Apple Watch every morning and an HRV via a, a chest strap. Let's get into the results and let me show you what I found out. All right, so if you look at my screen here, you're gonna be able to see all the days that I calculated. It's actually 33 days. I wanted to do this for a solid month. I didn't wanna do it for like 100 days because I wanted to compare like more of like an immediate effect, but I also needed to have enough data that I can run some statistical analysis. All right, so what you can see right here on the screen, these are the scores of my body battery when I woke up in the morning. It tells you what happen. Now Garmin says you should have at least 50, which says that you're somewhat recharged. So these are my scores. You can see I never really get up to 100 it's because I don't sleep well every night. You can see like 52, 62, 73, 50. All right. Next to that, I have my HRV measured on an Apple Watch. I use the program called HRV for training, HRV for training app. And basically what it did is it told me is my HRV good or bad? You can see I marked a one for good and a zero for bad. Then I measured my HRV using a chest strap, using something called HRV Elite, which is another app. Um, and basically the same thing, if it said good, I gave it a one, a zero um, was for bad. And then I rated how I was feeling and if I worked out that day. A one was for I was feeling pretty good or okay, and a zero was I was feeling bad. And then I went through and did some comparisons. So what's interesting is some days I found that these were off. Like one of the things, one metric, would be like different from all the rest. And I started to say like, okay, there are probably some differences here. Let's run some statistical analysis. Let's just do some eyeball comparisons. Let's see what I came up with. All right, so first of all, let's go down here and look at the means of each of these. So what I can see right away, eyeball comparison, and what I actually did, so over here on the right, let me just show you this column. Since Garmin says a 50 or better is pretty good, for your body battery. I basically, what I did is every time it was above 50, gave it a one, and every time it was below, gave it a zero. Um, that way I could do a little bit more better, some better comparison statistically to analyze these. So if we go back and start looking at the means, I can see that the average means, if I'm looking here, of the actual HRV versus how I was feeling are pretty close. If I look at the HRV of my body battery, it's actually a little little higher um, of a number saying I felt better a little more times versus my feelings, how I felt. So my average number for how I felt was a 0.73. Um, the average number of what body battery told me was 0.85, um, which told me that body battery maybe was overestimating how well I felt slightly. But let's get into that a little more. So. I started to run some more statistical analysis on this. So first of all, when I eyeball the data, I noticed that body battery and workout, or I mean how I'm feeling, don't really differ that much. There's maybe one or two out of 33 days that there's a difference. Is that bad or good? You gotta run some stats to find out. But I saw that, okay, even though the means didn't necessarily align up, you know, that was kind of an arbitrary 50 that Garmin has, the way I calculated that. So we, next we need to eyeball the data and really see, like, 
what is, is, are there some differences? And what are the differences in the HRV2? So the next thing I did is I decided to run some correlation tests using a Pearson R. Um, so I ran some correlation tests. What I found out was that basically the correlations are pretty low, um, which is not necessarily surprising. So my correlations were a little low when comparing everything, um, whether I compared body battery to feeling body battery. But even if I compared like my Apple Watch to how I was feeling was still pretty low correlations. You can see the numbers here. If you're not familiar with how correlations work, a one means a perfect correlation. And depending on what I'm measuring, you know, like a 0.42 can actually be very high, um, but a 0.42 can actually be very low. I'm looking right now like 0.7 and higher for this kind of statistic. That's what I would really like to see. And I don't see it. Now, I have to say, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And the reason I say that, that it's not a bad thing, is that I'm only looking at 33, an N of 33. If I was looking at like an N of 100, I'd be very disappointed if this was what I was seeing. But I'm not necessarily seeing um, a strong correlation between these. But that's not bad, okay. I mean, remember, we have to look at statistics and interpret them. When I gave this the eyeball statistic, my eyeball statistic says, wow, these are actually pretty good. Um, and I have some colors on here, and I should, I'll explain those in a minute. Basically, what the colors mean is that red means like one thing just differed from everything else, and yellow means like there was like a bunch of things that differed. Like nothing was making sense. Like two or more things disagreed each other. Like for example, on this one, yellow, I was feeling bad. My HRV on my Apple Watch said bad. HRV on my chest said good. And body battery recharged 70, up to 73, which is like one of my highest numbers. So this is like an odd day where nothing was making sense. This day right here, my HRV on my chest said bad, but everything else said good. You can see if you're actually looking at this chart, the HRV on my chest differs from everything else the most, which is the most surprising thing because that's supposed to be the most accurate, right? Um, <laughs> the, my HRV on my chest differed from everything else the most, but I still was like, you know what? I need to run some actual statistics. So I could run like an ANOVA. I can do like a regression analysis. I can compare these via a t-test. Um, I could start doing like uh, even like a two-way ANOVA if I wanted to like do some like check for interactions and stuff. But I decided the best way to really measure this was just to see did these differ from each other and these did these differ from feeling because that's really what I cared about was the feeling. So what I did is I said does a body battery body battery and HRV differ from feeling and I measured you know as I said how I measured this. So I ran some statistical analysis. Um, I actually did a, a one-way ANOVAs, so it would be like a four by one, like one-way ANOVA, um, to measure does, so basically what my question was would be like, does body battery differ from how I'm feeling? Does HRV and the Apple Watch differ from how I'm feeling? Does body battery differ from HRV on the Apple Watch? Does body battery differ from HRV via chest? Um, so what I did is I compared all of these to basically see what I would find. All right, so I ran the statistical analysis and what I found was that there was no significant difference. At setting my uh, level at significance level at 0 0.05, which is very common in statistical analysis. You know, I could have set it to like 0.01, but there's no reason to do that because it didn't even, me uh, 0.05, there was no significant difference. In fact, they weren't even close to being significant. So what does that tell me? It tells me a couple things. So first of all, what it tells me is that body battery compared to Apple Watch HRV, compared to chest HRV, compared to feeling, each of these compared to each other, there is no significant difference. That means that over time, given enough data, there's really not much variation between these. Now, a few things to point out. So I did not find any significance, um, but what's interesting is when you see the low correlation, but you don't f I didn't find significance, probably tells me a couple things. And when I eyeball the data, it actually looks pretty good 
besides this HRV chest, the rest of them all look pretty good. Okay, so for those of you that aren't too familiar with statistics and what I'm doing, when you run statistics, you don't just blindly accept results. You have to interpret and generalize. So I have all these pieces of data. I ran correlation. I can eyeball the data. I have how I'm feeling, which is a huge data piece right there. Um, and then I also ran some comparisons, statistical comparisons, whether it was a t-test, ANOVA, whatever. I, I chose to run an ANOVA, which is fine for this example. And I also was able to eyeball the means. Um, so what did I, what did I find? What do I think? Like, what are, what are my observations here? What do I, what are like my feelings? So my overall feelings is that I think that if I were to collect more data, let's say a hundred days, if this pattern continued for HRV chest, I believe that there would be a significant difference between this and the rest of the data, which is disappointing because the chest HRV is supposed to be the most accurate. I think there would probably be a significant difference, but that's a probably, it's not a definite because um, it might be more normal and there wouldn't be a difference. But you got to remember, I'm already running an N of 30, 33, which is not a bad number. An N of five or eight is probably way too low. I mean, some people, maybe I want an N of 100. If I was like, if I was gonna prescribe drugs based on my study that I'm doing right now, I would want an N of like 2000 or more, you know, like tons and tons of trials and trials and trials to get a very large N. This, I'm just comparing this to myself. An N of 33 is actually very good and I did not find a difference. So overall, what does this tell you? Overall, it tells you that using any of these factors, if I was just using feeling, just using feeling is not gonna tell me any more or less info than using my HRV, my Apple Watch, or my body battery. If I just went on my gut feeling every single morning, I would know enough as I did for the rest of these. It would tell me just as much. That's what the statistics are telling me. And that's what me eyeballing this data is telling me too tells me that the HRV chest for some odd reason appears to be a little different than the way I'm feeling, the Apple Watch HRV and my body battery, you know, which is very surprising. I'm using good software. I'm using a Polar H10 chest monitor. Um, and I'm, do, I'm doing this very in a very controlled environment, same time, same place, um, every single morning. So that's, you know, an interesting finding, but it still was not significant. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. It still was not a significant difference. I just noticed eyeballing it, it is a difference. Um, my HRV and my Apple Watch surprisingly aligns with both bottom battery and how I'm feeling very well. Um, body battery aligns with all of these really well. So I think my overall conclusion is that using any of these types of features um, will produce pretty good results which means you don't probably need any tech. You can probably just go based on what you're feeling and get a pretty good idea of how you're gonna do and how you should be doing, which makes sense. So what do I like to do personally? I always go by how, how, how am I feeling today? If I'm feeling crappy, I'm not gonna do a workout. If I'm feeling bad and like one of these is also bad, that's a pretty good indication that I probably should take the day off and I do. But if these are all saying bad, but I'm feeling great, I'm gonna go work out. Because that can happen too. So it makes the technology tough to just rely on, but I think it's a good extra piece of data. Um, so my recommendation to you, you know, do this experiment yourself. Maybe you're going to have some different results. I'd be really interested to hear what others have experienced when comparing this kind of data to see how it works for you, because it's all going to depend. It's not going to work the same for every person. It's all going to be a little different based on yourself and what you're doing. Um, and you have to remember, like from before I could run this experiment, I had to wear, I had to test my HRV on my Apple watch for like, I did it for a solid like month and a half, same with my chest. So that I had a nice baseline body battery, same thing. I wore each of these, for a significant amount of time before I started actually capturing any data to ensure that they would be accurate. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day.